The Geopolitics and Empire podcast is joined by a renowned forecaster, Martin Armstrong of armstrongeconomics.com. We'll be getting his thoughts on the most corrupt election in U.S. history, as he and his Socrates AI software puts it, and get his thoughts on the horrific techno-fascist or Marxist Great Reset being opposed upon us and anything else that's on his mind. Thank you for joining us for the first time, Mr. Armstrong. How are you doing? Oh, very good. Thank you for inviting me. All right, good to hear. Uh, on to my first question. It seems that everything that's happening right now is interlocked. Uh, you've been writing a lot about these subjects on your blog, The Economic Collapse Project COVID-1984, as I call it, the U.S. elections and the Great Reset. Half a year ago, we had renowned psychologist Dr. Robert Epstein on this show who said that 2020 was the year of the big tech takeover and that at least 15 million votes would be shifted to the Democrats who would be swept into office. You've said recently you believe they could have shifted even up to uh, 30 million or more votes, I believe. Many intellectuals from around the world have said that the current Trump administration is the last bulwark against global techno-fascist or communist tyranny. The fight is still ongoing. Trump may prevail in court uh, by December or January, as we are just weeks uh, or a few months away from the election being officially called. What is the Socrates telling you, Mr. Armstrong, and how do you view the election and the historic crossroads America finds itself at? Well, it's. I think it's clear that this election has been um, really the, the most corrupt in ever in American history, maybe in world history as well. But um, <clears throat> what we're looking at here is a deliberate attempt to take over the world with what I call communism 3.0. And it's a combination mainly being pushed out by the World Economic Forum in conjunction with supporters behind him are basically Bill Gates and George Soros. So it's a merger of their three philosophies. And it's, uh, you got Gates with wanting to reduce population. You got George Soros who wants a one world government with his open, you know, society. And then you have Klaus Schwab, um, who is really at, at heart a Marxist. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Uh, him and, and Thomas Piketty, which he supports in the World Economic Forum, you know, they, they focus on this oh, wealth inequality, etc. And if you listen to their, uh, eight, their I think, a very few minute uh, uh, video on <clears throat> their t Agenda 2030, I mean, the first thing is you will own nothing and you'll be happy. And that is what is at the core of this. I mean, I've been, you know, consulting probably, you know, with more governance maybe than anybody uh, ever in history. But um, I've been pushing, I mean, we have this problem with the debt. And they've been issuing debt since World War II with no intention of ever paying anything back. They've lowered interest rates to negative in 2014, trying to stimulate the economy. And after six years, nothing's happened. All right, so this is basically proven that Keynesian economics has also failed. So we're at a, this juncture. And I've been pushing for at least, look, let's knock off the debt and we can take what's out there, convert it to a, a perpetual bond, kind of like the old British consuls, raise the interest rate at least to 3%, and let's redesign the system, but keeping our liberty. <laughs> that problem presents to them that they would lose power. So they prefer Schwab, and they've gone to the World Economic Forum, um, and actually we had a conference in Rome, and, and it was Nigel from Farage from, from London who stood up he was our, our guest speaker, and he said he came there to speak at our conference because we're the alternative to Davos. And that's so true. Um, what they're doing, which as Schwab is pushing, and the reason all these governments are adopting it, and just look at the slogans they're all using. Um, build back better. 
That's coming from the OECD, from the IMF. Uh, Johnson in London's been saying it. You got Trudeau in Canada saying it. You got all the European leaders. It's a single slogan, and they're all using it. And Biden even was using it, even had it on a placard when he would stand up and, you know, and give a speech. So what's behind this is that they have reached this point of no return when it comes to debt. And as a re- result, um, <clears throat> Rob is basically saying to effectively default on the debt and his solution by this, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy is to nullify all debts, period, public and private. Uh, you'll no longer own your home and you'll be happy because you don't, your, your debts will also be eliminated. Um, this is his idea of equality. And uh, it's, it's really quite dramatic. And then you have this George Soros with the one, you know, uh, world government nonsense of open societies. And then if you watch his little video, you, you can see it on our site at armstrongeconomics.com. I don't know. It, it was on YouTube, but you never know what they take off anymore. Uh, we recorded it to keep it uh, in posterity here. But um, it's just there are eight predictions for this Agenda 2030. And Trudeau in Canada even came out and said, you know, they are committed to Agenda 2030. Um, I think he kind of thought that Trump was definitely done. So they were cheering that they're going to be able to take over the United States as well. But number two on that list is the United States will no longer be a superpower. It will be shared among nations. That's the United Nations. All right. If you look at the head of who he came out and said at the same time, Oh, it's climate change and tying that with this COVID nonsense. I mean, it, you do not destroy the economy in this manner. And uh, you would think, okay, fine. If the politicians made a mistake, they didn't understand the first time. Okay. Chalk it up to experience They're doing it again. So they know deliberately what they are doing. You go to New York City or London, I mean, a third of the small businesses were just destroyed. That's it. And now with the second round of lockdowns, they intend to take out the rest. And the idea is basically to, they're the Borghese in in Marxism, um, and to eliminate them. And then you'll accept this guaranteed basic income. And if you don't do what the government tells you to do, your income is cut off. I mean, this is really Stasi from from East Germany, honestly. I mean, it's it's unbelievable that they have such audacity to do this, but they have sold this agenda to all the mainstream media, which is why they're um, <clears throat> always against anything. I mean, anybody that says anything against them, oh, that's a conspiracy theorist. I mean, just read some of Schwab's books. I mean, he advocates putting chips in people. I mean, this isn't things that conspiracy theories are being put up. It's right in his his speeches, even. Um, His fourth, you know, industrial revolution is the merger of everything with, you know, technology with biology. I mean, this is, they are crazy. He even puts in there that, that eventually it's like he, he watched the Minority Report movie that the government can prevent crimes by reading your mind. You know, and it's, I mean, you just look at it and say, you know, what are you smoking? I mean, I don't know. Um, but this is what this agenda really is. And they're all calling it the Great Reset. And uh, even Powell from the Federal Reserve came out and, and said, the economy is not going to go back to the way it was. This is over. I mean, this is really a revolution. And it, it is Trump is the only one <clears throat> that's standing in their way. And if they can remove Trump, then that will allow them to use the nuclear power of the United States and handing it to the United Nations. And um, 
you you had Biden in the last debate even say that he said he was going to rejoin the UN, which which um, <clears throat> Trump pulled out of, uh, and he said to force China to comply with their great agenda. I mean, this is what they're you know, they think once they have that power, they'll be able to control the rest of the world. And, and they're just insane. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, I feel, uh, as you said, that in, in a way, this great reset is Marxism for the people, technocracy to manage it and capitalism for the elites, because they will be the only ones uh, owning property. And as you mentioned, it seems COVID, by all reasonable analysis, it's one giant fraud from the testing to the masks to the lockdowns. And as you said, its principal goal is to destroy all independent, small, medium-sized businesses and to automate as many jobs in all sectors as possible, creating a new Middle Ages scenario and a new serfdom and, and peasant class. Uh, and just to get your thoughts on how the economic side of things will play out. Um, central banks will be printing money into oblivion, creating, uh, I suppose, inflation, but then they're going to eliminate, uh, as you've been talking about, physical cash, introduce digital currencies, and many experts such as Richard Werner or the Finnish economist Tuomas Malinan, who we've had on the show, or yourself, say central banks will eliminate all commercial banks, replacing their function with big tech, fintech, And then, as you said, we'll basically be living in this scenario painted in the Bible's book of Revelation, where no one will be able to buy or sell without their permission. And already we see people who have been denied bank accounts, uh, they've had their bank accounts terminated for their political views and access to apps such as such as Airbnb and Uber, which are necessary to tr for transport and shelter. Uh, and, and you said they, they would abolish private property. I mean, what does this mean? Are they going to come to our homes uh, and stri strip us of our belongings? Uh, how do you say the economic collapse ahead? I don't really know how they would r rationally think that they could do that. Legally, they could just stand up and, and abolish all debts and <clears throat> then say the government owns all the, the real property. That they can do with a stroke of the pen. Would they come in and, and take you know all your 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 belongings? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, even when they made um, gold illegal you know, back in the '30s, uh, you know they went if you had it stored in a bank, you lost it. Uh, they did not go house to house and say, "Hey, okay, fine, give me all your twenty-dollar gold pieces." Uh, that they didn't do. Um, but, you know, make no mistake about it. They will seize all cryptocurrency accounts uh, and convert them to the government. And you've got China outlawing, you know, Bitcoin already. Um, we we had tremendous problems in Europe because our uh, our computer puts out, a, you know, forecasting on over a thousand different in instruments. and. Um, One of them happens to be Bitcoin, and we got in a big dispute there uh, in in Europe, and they're saying, "Oh, you you can't." I said, "We're not selling Bitcoin. It's the computers writing a report forecasting Bitcoin, and it, no, can't do anything with Bitcoin." I mean, this is absolutely absurd. Uh, but I find ironic that here you have. Klaus Schwab talking about the fourth industrial revolution and artificial intelligence. We have the only fully functioning AI system in the world. It is monitoring absolutely every country, every instrument in there. We, it writes its own reports. There's no person actually writing these things. It's putting out over a thousand different reports every day on every country from from Asia, China, Middle East, whatever. In fact, we are the only forecasters allowed in China because they are fully aware it's a computer and they don't have to worry that, you know, by the way, on page three, paragraph four, uh, overthrow your government, you know? Uh, so, um, <clears throat> Chinese government is well aware of us. I mean, I actually, was called over there uh, back in 97 and helped them um, become capitalistic. Uh, I, I found that a very interesting experience, uh, but it was, this is what we're really facing. And here we have a computer 
which Schwab is saying, oh, it's the new age of artificial intelligence. And this computer has, has forecasted everything correctly. It has <clears throat> forecasted Trump would have win in 2016, Brexit, um, and it, it projected that this would be the most corrupt election in history, uh, that Trump should win. And it has never been wrong. Um, it goes simply by the numbers. It doesn't ask my opinion or anybody else's. And the only other time you could say it was right and wrong was the election of 2000. I projected that Gore should have won. Of course, the counting stopped, went to the Supreme Court, and they stopped the counting and handed it to Bush. At the end, it proved that, yes, Gore should have won. He had 500,000 more votes than, than Bush. But, you know, that's the way things, you know, develop. I mean, it was the only other time I would say it was right and wrong. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, the, this is clearly attempt to steal this election. And here we have uh, the largest artificial intelligence system in the entire world that's fully functioning and and the only one that actually writes all these reports itself. There's no human involved. And it forecasts that these guys are wrong and they're going to lose. Um, it, it, look, we're probably going into civil wars and, and revolutions and things of this nature, but their idea of conquering the entire world and putting all this crazy stuff in, they will lose, which is why I think they are starting to realize that the protests are getting uh, really more aggressive. Uh, Denmark had passed this law on COVID and the people were out there banging and, and protesting constantly for a week and they had to repeal it. So they are losing. And I think that's why they're all of a sudden getting very aggressive. And uh, <clears throat> I'll warn you right now what they are doing. They float things out. And this is the way it operates. They, they take an idea and they float it to see what the reaction is. Already, they're putting out, oh, there may be a cyber attack on the power grids by a uh, state operated uh, <clears throat> indirectly one way or another. And it's them. But they will take down the power grid trying to force this great um, reset through. And at the same time, then they're going to try and blame China or Russia, or maybe the two. Then they know. Okay, if they can create a war, then everybody gets patriotic. All right. Um, I mean, I put out uh, reports on the war cycle. They have lied about absolutely every possible war, not just the weapons of mass destruction with Iraq, but I mean, everything. Um, World War One. I. I mean, the Germans even took a an ad and said, don't, you know, sail on the Lusitania because they're using it to to you know, to bring arms over and we will sink it. It's right in the New York Times. I mean, uh, Vietnam, it's well known now that Johnson lied to the American public and his quotes are out there that, well, that, that night he says, for all I know, they were shooting at whales. So the United States was never attacked. Um, you take World War II in, in Japanese in the Pearl Harbor, they moved most of the strategic ships out because they knew. And, you know, when the Japanese wanted to deliver a declaration of independence to the White House, they said, oh, we're busy right now. Come back in about an hour. So then they could say, oh, they never even gave us a declaration of independence they have, uh, of war. I mean, they have lied about absolutely every war period. Uh, they never tell the truth. Um, <clears throat> And this is, you know, unfortunately, I am concerned that they will try and take out the power grid to turn this into a patriotic thing and uh, use that and turn it against uh, China and Russia. What do you think would be the purpose of this? As you said, you've said previously that by 2027, Socrates foresees international war. I and many of my guests uh, also foresee the same thing. What do you think would be the purpose of this? Would it be to, uh, is just human nature or to completely destroy the old, you know, global system and, and to b bring in this new global system as well as to eliminate 
any nations that are exercising sovereignty, such as uh, Russia or China? What, what do you think their goal is? It, it's kind of all of the above. Um, but why I think they're doing, they're, they seem to be stepping up quite aggressively. Um, you know, I can't reveal our sources, but we have people that are actually in some of these organizations who disagree. And they have been, you know, sending me information back and forth. Um, we even have some very high level journalists in some of the top five newspapers in the world who were told they're not allowed to write about the fraud. So they've been sending me what they get that they can't publish. Um, so <laughs> we're very well connected. I think what they're doing is they're escalating this at this stage because they know there's a lot of resistance that's coming. So, uh, particularly if, if with Trump, it's not the lawsuits. If he can, the lawsuits can prevent the, the um, electoral college from certifying, uh, that is the week of December 14th. Then it gets thrown into the House, like the election of 1824. So the real strategy there would be to do that because in the House, each state gets one vote and Republicans have 37 states. They win. So if he can just stop this uh, certification, that's the real objective with these lawsuits. And to drag it out and then it gets thrown into the into the House like the election of 1824, then Trump will, will win. That is our best hope um, because that, you know, we kind of need him right now to stand up. I mean, he um, does, I think, understand what's going on. Uh, he, he can't come out and say some of this stuff because the press will immediately call him a oh, conspiracy theorist or whatever. But um, he's kind of fired people that were, the problem, uh, I would say my biggest criticism of Trump was that um, he went to Washington, he listened too much to some of these people, and they allowed he allowed them to put in people to really obstruct his administration, like Bolton, for example. Um, so you'll see after this election, he fired a group of them, and that you know, is great. And he even said that, after, you know, he may end up, he changed, he did an executive order, which will allow him to fire uh, even Fauci. Uh, so I think that's really critical. And if he can do, you know, if we can see him win in, in, the, in the house, um, then we have a shot at kicking back all this stuff. And then maybe the international war is pushed off until 2027, but they're trying to bring this thing forward because they know at this stage in the game, they are losing. I guess one of my final questions would be, uh, I hope you're right. I hope they don't succeed. I hope people wake up and start with this civil unrest, civil disobedience, and somehow we overcome, but history tells us these things last for years. Uh, and let's say, you know, they do advance at least for a while or the worst comes to pass. You know, they get some form of communist dystopian technocracy. You know, how would Martin Armstrong react? How, what, what individual and practical measures would, would you take to, to mitigate or to, to try uh, and survive in, in this kind of situation? Uh, I mean, the only thing I think would be to <clears throat> head to Asia, really, <laughs> um, if it got to that point. <clears throat> Um, I, I mean, look, we have offices around the world. We're in China, Thailand, Singapore, I mean, India, Abu Dhabi, Germany, uh, London. We have an annual conference, um, <clears throat> which is coming up in December 4th and 5th in Orlando. We had to cancel our conferences in Shanghai and, and in uh, Frankfurt this year. And we can't bring in any of our staff from, from overseas. I have staff around the world, all stranded. Um, it's, just, it's just incredible. Um, now, if we were doing the physical product uh, that had to be delivered, I think we would be out of business. The only thing that we have is that it, it, 
it's it's downloadable, and we have servers around the world, so we're okay. Uh, but if we didn't have that, I'm not sure we would even survive. You said that this could possibly be your last conference ever. Is that true? I think. Look, what they're really doing here is, um, I mean, I, you know, you can look on our our site. I even put a picture on there. I bought a box of the masks from Amazon, and it says right on there they do not prevent disease. All right, so why are we doing this? And when when Fauci first began, he said masks do nothing. Now all of a sudden he's saying we may have to wear masks forever. The whole object here of masks and social distancing is to prevent civil unrest. <clears throat> Stopping international travel is also part of it. So what they're really trying to do with this is prevent uh, people from traveling around. As of January 1st in Europe, an American, if you're even allowed to go, uh, Europe is requiring you have to get a visa now to go to Europe uh, in advance of even getting on a plane. And what's going to be added to that is a COVID vaccine. So unless you accept the vaccine, you can't even go there. They're wiping out the tourist industry completely. Um, I mean, I know people that, you know, have, have like, you know, small hotels in Europe, they're done, they're finished. Um, they're out of business. Their the tourism is completely done. Um, if you're in Britain, you can't even go down to Spain. I mean, it's it's insane what they have done. So it, this is not um, to protect us. I mean, I would understand if we're talking about a serious disease where you know even just as little as ten percent of the population. Uh, was dead or something like that. Uh, you know, look, going up to like the the Black Plague is fifty percent. I mean, here, you know, all right, fine. Oh yeah, a million people have died. Okay, one point three million die in car crashes every year. We outlaw cars. Um, <clears throat> it, it, you know, it's. I was tested five times in a single month, and when you know there. A doctor asked me again. I said, look, I've already been tested five times. You know, I don't have it. He goes, yeah, it doesn't mean anything because the tests aren't valid. <laughs> I mean, so it, it's just a joke. The whole thing is a joke, and it's just being used to scare people uh, so they get their agenda going, period. Any final thought uh, for us or anything that uh, I failed to bring up? Any final thought to leave the listeners with? I... <clears throat> Look, just, you know, keep a rational head, um, open your eyes, don't believe what whatever's coming out of the mainstream media and big tech. Why are they censoring people? Because if the government did it, that would be illegal. They say they're private, they get to do it. Why <clears throat> are they doing it to begin with? Um, Twitter has square. You have uh, Google, just, you know, I just put it on the blog. They're all competing with banks. They're all moving into being, Google's moving into where you have a credit, you know, a checking account with Google. Um, you know, right by my house, I mean, there was, I went and I had opened an account at, at Bank of America because it was convenient. They closed. They never opened up again. Bank of America has shut down probably 10 uh, out of 12 branches in the area. They know what's coming. It's, it's you know, why open up a branch if we're not going to be in existence anymore? Um, and if you say, okay, fine, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy because we're going to eliminate all debts, then you don't need banks. Banks won't be there to lend money. Whatever money you may have owed a bank is wiped out. There's no appetite at all anymore to to even bail out banks. Um, 
And the bankers basically, I think, have been played for the biggest fool. They've been, you know, living off of uh, basically fake handouts all the time. They lose money and they go to the government and say, if you don't bail us out, then who's going to sell your bonds? Well, if they don't sell bonds anymore, they're dead. Okay, so that whole solution from Schwab is gone. So they don't need the banks. So this is why you're seeing big tech coming out with all kinds of stuff. Um, <clears throat> they're out there censoring us to in because they are going to be the new elite. They're replacing the banks on top of it. So it's it, it's really trying to change absolutely everything possible. Um, so there'll be no more mortgages. I mean, I mean, when I went behind the Berlin Wall uh, with a friend to really see what it was before it fell, uh, he had family there. And they were still living in the same house from World War II with bullet holes in the built in, in the walls, etc. They're not permitted to leave without permission of the government. And as long as that apartment was still functioning, that's where they stayed for the rest of their life. That's the type of communism we're talking about here. So, yes, fine, you'll be happy. All right, your mortgage will be wiped out. You'll never be let, allowed to leave your house. Well, I hope people wake up uh, and we push back as we always have uh, in history. And speaking of censorship, listeners should um, subscribe to our email list. We've been uh, censored and find us on our alternative platforms, which are slowly growing. And of course, visit the website uh, armstrongeconomics.com to stay up with uh, uh, stay up to date with the great free insights that Mr. Armstrong uh, puts out, as well as I believe the three tier subscription service, where it starts at I think fifteen dollars a month for the average Joe like myself, and then there are more expensive tiers for people who are more interested in trading. Uh, and there's also the Twitter follow the uh, Twitter at Strong Economics as well as sign up for the conference on December 4th, which you can watch virtually, and there will be a recorded uh, video uh, available as well as if, if you can't make the live conference. Um, okay, so Mr. Armstrong, thank you for being a courageous voice of reason and opposition to this global tyranny enveloping us, and and thank you for being on Geopolitics and Empire. Well, thanks for inviting me. If we just need as many people to start standing up and seeing the truth, and then we can save our future. I hope you enjoyed this Geopolitics and Empire podcast and interview. I would like to remind you that our website is geopoliticsandempire.com, and you can sign up for our mailing list that goes out each weekend with the latest podcast and a long collection of important news headlines. It's good to sign up for the newsletter in case we experience censorship and deplatforming. You can help the Geopolitics and Empire podcast by subscribing to and interacting with all of our channels such as YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Gab, Minds, and Steemit. You can also help us by leaving a rating and review on your favorite podcast platforms such as iTunes, CastBox, Stitcher, Spreaker, and so on. Finally, if you value our work and our mission and would like to see us continue interviewing experts from across the political spectrum, please consider leaving a one-time donation via PayPal or Bitcoin or becoming a regular monthly supporter on our Patreon. All the links can be found on geopoliticsandempire.com. Thanks for listening.